try to hit me if you're able Cause you figured out that mercy's off the table I can tell you're getting really sick of trying But I think you'll just magic keep dying Jasper Bat Jr. is the final boss of No More Heroes 2, and he's gained a fair bit of infamy, even among people who haven't played the game. For starters, there's him as a character. He's built up as the one who hired Hitman to kill Travis's friend and cause the events of the game to happen, but you don't actually see what he looks like until you fight him at the very end of the game. Then you find out that he looks like a soy jack, and that Yuri Lowenfall is giving him the most over-the-top baby voice. And I'm gonna sound like an edgy contrarian when I say this, but I actually like Jasper as a character. It's such a fun concept to build up some grand final showdown and then to reveal it's against what is basically Batman but a pathetic loser. There's also a really clever joke where his backstory is that he's a family member of some nameless characters you killed in a side quest from the first game and forgot about. However, know that I only said I like Jasper as a character because him as a boss is a whole different story. His fight has three phases and they're all bad in their own distinct ways. His first phase is easy to the point of being boring, except for one bit where you're supposed to trigger a scripted law sequence, but there's no way the average player would know what to do without using external resources. The third phase has him transform into a giant parade float. He can hit you from across the room, and when you're up close, it can be hard to tell when he's attacking, especially in the original Wii release, which didn't have camera controls. You're gonna take a lot of hits, but it's not like said hits are particularly damaging, so as long as you don't come in with too much damage from the previous phases, it's not that hard, just kinda tedious. And if you do come in with too much damage, you start again with full health when you die, and you don't have to refight the first two phases, so go get him, tiger. But wait. First? Third? Could it possibly be that I'm forgetting a number in between 1 and 3? The main reason for this fight's infamy is its second phase. But to be fair, this part of the fight isn't without its bits of good design. A good chunk of his attacks, like his bad projectiles and his heavy punch, do a good enough job at telegraphing themselves. His wrestling move in particular is a good way to punish players for getting greedy and to reward players for not just holding the lock-on button and calling it a day. Hell, even the insta-kill where you die when you get hit into a window is a really good idea in a vacuum. It could have given the fight this element of strategy regarding positioning, and it's a nice callback to a joke from a cutscene at the beginning of the game. Unfortunately, everything this phase had going for it was thrown out of the window because of one attack. After losing a certain amount of health, Jasper will start using a series of three teleport punches, and after losing even more, he adds wind to them to make them even worse. He gives no tell for the first attack of this combo, and even if you manage to predict it coming and dies the first one, there's still a good chance that you'll get hit by the other two. Or the other five. Or the other eight. Or the other- He spams this attack a lot, is what I'm saying. This one attack makes the fight unbearable for a first-time player. If you're gonna fight him for the first time, your best options are to exploit the window of invincibility that changing katanas gives you, or to spam the cheat death technique. I've seen the argument that Jasper's second phase is not that bad because it's designed around advanced techniques like dark stepping and parrying, but that's hardly an excuse. These techniques take some practice to understand, and they're not required or even explained at any other point in the game. Requiring the use of these techniques would be like if you booted up the arcade mode of any Street Fighter game and found out that one of the fights inherently requires you to Daigo parry. Even then, Jester's fight can still fuck over advanced players. This is the top bitter mode speedrun. Notice how the runner has to repeatedly use the cheat death command to stand a chance. This is the top sweet mode speedrun. Notice how the runner is still getting repeatedly punts at one point. If someone who actively practices the game still got fucked over at some point of the best run of the lowest difficulty, then just imagine how bad it must be for a first time player. All in all, this may be an extremely unpopular opinion and a scorching hot take, but Jasper Bat Jr. is not that good of a fight. He's not the No More Heroes boss I'd consider to be the absolute worst because a new destroy man can suck my destroy cannon, but Jasper's fight is still infamous for a reason. But where exactly did that infamy start? You thought Eric Sparrow had no redeeming qualities. You'd be right, but compared to number one, Eric Sparrow is tame. Because at least Sparrow didn't have your best friend murdered. At least he didn't pretend to murder your girlfriend, your brother, and a fellow assassin of yours. At least he wasn't one of the most unfair final bosses in gaming history. At least he wasn't Jasper F***ing Bat Jr. This is the beginning of the end! The Canton community is something I've talked about before in one of my favorite videos on the channel. But to give you a brief summary, Gaming Countdowns are a genre of early 2010s YouTube videos where users rank the top 10 best or worst examples of a given topic. The two people credited for popularizing Countdown videos were Alex Rasan, who went by the Autark of Flame, and Josh Scorcher, who went by the Fiery Joker. And their collab list on the most hated characters in video games is the Countdown that immediately comes to mind when you think of the Countdown community. And wouldn't you know it, the video's number one segment and grand finale was dedicated to the Pizza Batman himself. The segment goes over Jasper's role in the story and the problems with all three phases of his fight before ending with one final rant from Alex. He's a murderer! 
He's annoying! He's maddeningly difficult to beat, and he robbed me of a good final battle! I hate him! I hate him! Fuck! This segment, as well as most countdowns from that era, are really cheesy in retrospect. But going back to these countdowns today, they still have their own unique charm, specifically because of this cheesiness. However, back in the day, Alex's rant on Jasper was taken more seriously. Viewers saw it as an epic takedown of a character that they just heard about for the first time. And since Alex's videos inspired many similar creators to make countdowns, it's only natural that many more rants about Jasper would pop up. Most of these rants just repeated the same points made by Alex without bringing anything new to the table, though. One of the only real changes was that one particular countdown maker, the guy started the trend of calling him Bastard Twat Jr. instead of his actual name. The hate towards Jasper essentially became a symbol of the Countdown community. He was constantly getting shit on and it seemed like no one was willing to defend him. But in 2012, one man decided to stand up for Jasper. You gotta be shitting me! Uh, nah. Honestly, I really don't hate Jasper Bat Jr. as much as other people because I find the battle against him not so bad. It's actually kind of symbolic if you consider the fact that it's just a giant way of saying that revenge really ain't satisfying. This is a clip from a video by Rabbit Luigi, one of the biggest figures in the Countdown community that covered his top 10 least favorite boss fights. And in this clip, he's participating in the honored Countdown community tradition of making it seem like he's going to go for a predictable choice before revealing that it's actually a completely different choice. But what's more important is his reasoning for not picking Jasper, that being the theory that Jasper Bat Jr. was made bad on purpose. While it's unlikely that Rabbit Luigi himself was the one who came up with this theory, he was definitely the one who brought it to the Countdown community's attention. Basically, this theory proposes that the gameplay flaws of Jasper Rat Jr.'s fight were actually deliberate design choices made as some sort of commentary on how revenge shouldn't be satisfying. The main piece of evidence for this is because No More Heroes creator Koichi Suda is well known for deliberately fucking with his game for thematic reasons. The most notable example is from the first No More Heroes. The level leading up to the rank 5 match is deliberately made to be just a hallway and the boss is killed in the cutscene as a joke. So with this in mind, I would like to say that the revenge fury is absolutely 100% bullshit. However, before I argue against the revenge theory, there's an important distinction that I want to make. Most of the time I see the revenge theory being criticized is from the perspective that making a boss bad on purpose is inherently a bad thing to do. Even if I don't believe in the revenge theory, I also disagree with this notion. Video games should be free to have deliberately frustrating or unfun gameplay for artistic reasons. I get that bringing up the games as art debate is among the most cliche things that a YouTuber can do, but fuck it. Gaming can only truly be a form of art if it's free to evoke more than just one emotion. As far as the actual reasons I don't believe in this theory, the first one is that there are still some aspects of the fight, namely Jasper's wrestling move, that are genuinely well designed. What, did you really think that I complimented Jasper earlier in the video for no reason? For a fight that was supposed to be bad, what would be the point of adding an attack that does a pretty good job at testing the player's skills? If Jasper was deliberately designed to be unsatisfying, these small bits of good design would serve zero purpose. Moreover, the design issues with Jasper's fights aren't even unique to him. Is his first phase being pathetically easy really that much of a surprise in a game that also has Chloe Walsh? Is the cheapness of his second and third phase is really that unexpected when a new destroyman exists? It really doesn't seem like Jester's fight is supposed to be some grand statement on how revenge is bad when a lot of its issues also exist in less important fights. Moving on to the narrative, if Jester's issues were supposed to reflect the narrative, there's two fights that should have also been intentionally bad, those being Captain Vladimir and Alice Twilight. In the Vladimir fight, Travis goes up against someone who was exploited by the UAA and ultimately just wanted to return to Earth. And in the Alice fight, Travis and his opponent both realize they've grown tired of killing, and when the fight ends, the former lashes out at the UAA out of anger. Yet these fights are considered to be two of the best ones in the game. Why would Jasper be deliberately designed to be unsatisfying when two of the fights that are supposed to be unsatisfying from a narrative standpoint suffer from clear looter narrative dissonance issues? And lastly, using Suda's previous work and general design philosophy as evidence doesn't hold up when he had a significantly smaller role in the creation of No More Heroes 2. In fact, No More Heroes 2 was and still is heavily criticized for not having as much of Suda's influence. Stuff like the deliberately boring minigames being streamlined and Travis actually getting the girl make it seem unlikely to me that this game would also have something like what the revenge theory is describing. So all in all, while I think the revenge theory is an interesting interpretation, I ultimately don't think it's true. If it was true, it was not conveyed well. Going back to the Countdown community, since Countdown artists were running out of things to talk about in their Jasper segments, every segment on him from then on there had to mention the revenge theory in some way. Alex even talked about Jasper again in his top 10 worst boss fights list. Seeing as the list came out almost 3 years later than the hated characters list, this actually held up significantly better and has some really strong analysis about why the boss is being talked 
talk about, don't work. The Jasper segment in particular focused on how the fight being like the Revenge Fury described it wouldn't work within the context of No More Heroes 2's story and themes. But eventually, due to a combination of factors I've talked about in a prior video, the Counter community became a relic of what it once was. The genuine hate for Jasper Bat Jr. faded out, and people who were nostalgic for the Counter community began to elevate him to some weird in joke. You know when you have a massive problem when you have too many friends and family members and you just can't get enough Christmas cards for all of them? Well, Jasper Bat Jr. is here for us with his amazing idea to kill everyone you know and love to reduce your group of friends and family to you and one cat. And all I have to say is, wow, what a nice guy. And that's where the story of Jasper Bat Jr. Sometime in 2020, the first two No More Heroes games were ported to the Switch. And so, with those two games ported to a modern console, nostalgia for the counting community was at an all-time high. Many people who grew up hearing horror stories about Jasper's fight decided to buy these remasters solely so they can experience Jasper firsthand. And it went as well as you expect. One of these unfortunate souls was me. And after getting punched into a corner for the 20th time, I came to a realization. I actually really enjoy this fight. This isn't my inner contrarian saying that the fight was actually good. It's still really badly designed. But what I am saying is that within the context of my content community nostalgia, the fight wraps around to being entertaining from an ironic standpoint. Every time I got comboed into oblivion or thrown out the window, I thought it was the funniest shit. After all this time, it was amazing to finally experience this weird in-joke of a niche early 2010s internet community firsthand see that it was exactly as bad as everyone said it was. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that Jasper Bat Jr. is actually not the final boss of No More Heroes 2. In actuality, the real final boss of No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle, is the friends we met along the way.